Allie, too, just because we're associated with <laughs> Just because we're associated. <laughs> All right. Uh, stop laughing! This is serious! <laughs> okay. Um, we finally got to see Scream. Oh, yes. I love it. Yeah. This was fun. This was I, really I fun. Had, <laughs> oh, I had such a good time watching this movie. I did. This, this one felt like... Very self indulgent, and it was a beautiful, beautiful it is, thing. It is so self indulgent and self aware, and uh, and it's really un- up to ha- ham fisted, and it is proud it of works. that. It works, and that it, and works. it is yeah. proud of that, and it works. And it's because, and the reason it works is because the original did the exact same thing, yep. mm-hmm. and that's why I like this movie. It, mm-hmm. it does, it does basically the same thing that the original screen this, does. This is one of those horror movies where. Being meta makes sense. Yes. Yes. Yes, it does. It makes sense. Being meta makes sense, unlike, you know, something like Matrix Resurrections, Mm -hmm. which didn't need to be like, it didn't need to have a, like a conversation. That movie didn't need a conversation of like, oh, Matrix, it's actually about trans identity or Mm -hmm. yada, yada. And all these people giving their theories sitting around a table. I'm like, why does Matrix need to do this? No, it did not. It didn't need to do that. Um, And also, this is like a testament to how meta this movie got it yes. had a look behind you scene and a look behind you mm-hmm. scene and a look, look behind, behind you scene <laughs> which is just, like, just yeah. the best and it was like i just love the fact that it's up to like current generations just yeah because like uh, as we all know like the original screen took place in the 90s so when you have that going mm-hmm. for it yeah everything takes place in the 90s so now when you're building up to the current generation of 2020 mm-hmm. it, it really just built up like Hey, yeah, we had the internet, yeah. Reddit, mm-hmm. Twitter, these yeah. reviews, these critics, like, judging. Dead me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that got really exciting for me. I was like, uh, I was, I was so happy to uh, see that. I like, was really so happy. happy? I was happy. <laughs> the YouTube, oh, y'all talking about the YouTuber guy? Yeah, Jay uh-huh. and oh. his wife. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. he, oh my gosh, he does all these, like, kill count uh-huh. videos. Oh, okay. Ooh, he's and awesome. I didn't oh. know he was going to be in here. He's so, awesome. So That's when funny. I saw him in it, I was like, oh my gosh, is that James? Well, yeah. this is, like, the second time he's been in a horror movie. Yeah. Too. And just, like, the fact that he's doing a review on Stab 8. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so I guess before we actually talk really more into this movie, we should go ahead and describe what it's about. Okay, this basically, this movie, this is it's called Scream, but it's basically Scream Five. Yeah, mm-hmm. let's just be honest, yeah. because yes. it's it takes place in the exact chron- chronological order of the other Scream films, you know, mm-hmm. Sid, and it brings back all the old characters that were still alive, you know, Gale, Sid, Sidney Sidney, played by Nev Campbell, uh, Gail Weathers played by Courtney Cox, Dewey played by David Arquette. Yep. Um, it references um, the first one, Randy, mm-hmm. you know, Jamie Kennedy's character. Billy um, Loomis. Yeah, yeah, Billy Loomis. And so basically, this movie is very much about Ghostface is back, terrorizing a new set of kids, but at the same time, obviously trying to draw in the old, the cast. old cast. Because if you've ever seen Scream, you know that Scream is a horror movie in which what happens in it also exists as a movie, mm-hmm. and people recreate that movie. And um, if you've never seen it, I probably just confused the hell out of you. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's but, very meta. yeah, because yeah, Scream. One of the things about Scream that's always been interesting. My Scream has always been popular. Um, and why I've kind of liked Scream, even though I don't really consider it one of my all-time favorite horror or slasher films. Um, what makes it different is that it's always had this sense of humor about itself, about cliches. Yeah. And it plays cliches and. Um, sort of has a joke attitude, but at the same time makes them scary. Mm-hmm. And because that's one of the things about Scream, you know, th- th- as, as funny as the original is at times, there is nothing funny about that opening scene with, is it, wasn't it Drew Barrymore? Uh-huh. Yeah. There is nothing fun. That is one of the Tense. fucking most intense cold opens of any horror movie I've ever seen. Scream, the thing where Scream gets me is it starts to get too much into that satire groove and it starts to become less scary as the movie comes on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unlike Halloween, which I think gets more scary as it goes on. It's mm-hmm. a reverse. But I do like Scream. And mm-hmm. this movie is a perfect, perfect tribute to what made the original Scream good. Because just the opening alone just clarifies you what you're getting yourself into. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um. Honestly, when I first saw the trailers for the movie mm-hmm. i had the child's play um vibes and like the new child play from uh-huh. 2019 yeah mm-hmm. 2019 with like the whole entire yeah. use of like phones and yeah the media. technology mm-hmm. that's why i thought screen was just from the opening alone but no surprisingly yeah. no it mm-hmm. stick to its original, original yeah like whilst whilst implementing while yeah. while still using things. like the opening scene is of 
because basically, I guess we can go ahead and spoil this because it's not really a spoiler because they tell you right in the first act of this movie. Um, the new girl, the new main girl, the new Sydney Prescott mm -hmm. who's sharing the screen the new with final girl. Yeah. who's sharing the screen with the old uh, Sydney played by Nev Campbell. Um, her and her sister, you find out early on, are the direct children of Billy Loomis. I think she, she is. The oldest oh, you're right. This, you're, the older one is. You're right. The younger sister isn't. Yeah. Um, finds out that she is the daughter of Billy Loomis, who was, you know, the killer from the original one. Yep. And so basically you have Ghostface coming back and killing people, trying to, by the end of it, you realize that this is very much a movie where, like, the original one was an attack on horror cliches that it turned against themselves to make them scary. You know, like, in the original one, you had the scene where uh, Sydney, she's on the phone, first time she's talking to Ghostface, and she's like, um, I think it's demeaning because, you know, they always, you always know the girl is so stupid <laughs> because she, yeah. she goes, she, every time the killer's in the house, she runs up the stairs when she should run outside. And then she does exactly that, <laughs> runs up the stairs because the door's blocked. You know, like, yes. yeah, like, that's one of the, yeah, it's always been, like, aware of that. Yeah. And um, and that's what's always been scary. Like, just like we were talking about at the very beginning, that domestic scene at mm -hmm. the very beginning of the original Scream, there is nothing funny about that because it's so realistic. Yes, it's a cliche, but it's a damn good realistic cliche. I mean, what's more terrifying than being attacked in the safest place you know? Yeah. Home. Oh, this domestic setting, and it sounds so realistic at first as the guy's on the phone. It's like he first starts out in like this flirty voice, like he got a boyfriend, and then and it, it immediately to, devolves into, he's like, don't you I, the phone, he's like, bitch. He's like, what's your name? Why do you want to know? Because I want to know who I'm looking yes. at. Oh, and, like, <laughs> and then like the scene was just real hard. I was like, and what it got, still gets me. So it gets me nerves, right? It's just that unlocking on the phone and security lock. Yes, on the, I was uh -huh. like, the home security, the phone tracking, the, the part where the one jock oh, boy I hated has that got one that so phone. much because I've heard so many stories that involve like uh, sharing your location, yeah. people coming and getting you. Snapchat yes. locations. Yeah. It's very like like I said. It's such a like it's such a mundane cliche thing and yet it's so realistic and that's why it's scary because it's, like, it's happened yeah. in so many situations and I, I like how also this movie also it not only does this movie this movie very much trashes kind of the worst of the horror cliches yes it yes. opens with the the younger the younger sister who first of all let me say that actress was wonderful Mm -hmm. oh, yes. the, the younger mm -hmm. sister was wonderful. She's fantastic. I don't know what her name was. She was fantastic. Like they, uh, what I like about what they did with her, they not only gave, not only was she funny and witty and you know just bite gritting, biting her teeth into every scene she's in. I like that the writers felt um, were comfortable enough letting her have a fighting chance because you have scenes where she's literally. Gina, the, the scene where she's in the hospital and, she, and her hands bleeding, the, wheeling yeah. the wheelchair in absolute um, Gina pain. Because <laughs> she's Ortega. no longer on those wheelchairs. I think I think that's what yeah. it said at the end. Yeah, just being like having suffered all this, now mm -hmm. she's taking herself yeah. off the painkillers and all yeah. that searing, yeah. terrible pain is coming back, and she's trying to and wheel like the wheelchair. Some chairs, like she's on old wounds, probably had open oh, up. Yeah, just like. I was like, oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, and I like something else about this movie. I like that this movie also, something that this has a upper hand on the original, you really care about like the character's trauma that they have been through through all this. Courtney Cox, David Arquette, mm -hmm. and Nev Campbell. Mm -hmm. You get a sense that these are some wounded people. Mm -hmm. You do. And especially with uh, Courtney Cox's character, because in the original... I did not care for her much, like even towards the end. Mm -hmm. yeah. This one actually made me kind of care about her. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. this is because she was always like an opportunistic mm -hmm. news viper, which you it's, know, or whatever, it's nice parasite. to see her character arc kind of come full circle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this round. Uh huh. And it's just no nice to know. It's just like the fact that the the, the experience is all before. It's so like mm -hmm. when they had to do it all over again, it's just like oh, yeah. oh my like, goodness. Because like, what do you think? It's a trap. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, no, my favorite is, like, like when Sydney's on the phone with Dale, uh, Dewey, and he's like, you have a gun on you? I always have a gun yeah. on you. I'm Sydney fucking Prescott. Of course I have a gun. I know. Why Why? Why the hell does Sydney Prescott carry a gun, but Neo doesn't in his movie? I don't know. It's, it's just like funny because, like, they're like, man, I'm not going to this all over again. And by somehow they still get lured back into it. Because, mm -hmm. like, in the movie, like, what was the group? Like, the group of friends, the new friend group, yeah, had to run into the circle, like, 
the first three steps. One, never trust the love interest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Two, never um never trust nobody in your friend group. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then what is three? The most important. Um why wow. never say uh, uh, uh the uh, uh bad guy always ha intentions always stem from the past. Yeah. 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 And I also feel that um the one boy, um uh thirteen reason why boy. Oh, yeah. Dylan Minnette, uh, he didn't follow the uh, unspoken rule. Never take a shower in a horror film. Exactly. <laughs> oh, and the fact that, like, he has his, like, tasers and weapons, he just leaves them by yeah. the front door. He doesn't even bother, like, yeah. to just, like, at least take the but, taser with like, him. Like, well, it's like you said, you fall into that, you feel most safe in your own home. Uh-huh. And in a screen movie, that's honestly the most dangerous place. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised, like, usually most kills in, like, screens always take place at night. Mm-hmm. So what, yeah, this surprised. is broad daylight. Yeah, I was like, oh, is why not not yeah. here or awake to <laughs> yeah. hear some screaming? And, uh-huh. Well, okay, yeah, yeah, because that is one of the things. Like, also, when he's in like a hospital, how many hospitals do you know of have at our ghost towns? How many hospitals do you know? Yeah. Like, whenever the killer it, shows it, it up, the hospital into, clears out. He fell into that Halloween two trap. <laughs> yeah, and, that, that's what annoyed me. Like during the movie, I was like, oh, all right, now, now, listen, you, you're doing well. But this, why is why is no one in here? You you were in a you went to a hospital last week. Yeah, <laughs> there's like people everywhere. You tell me like there's no one in here now. The patients, okay, yeah. sure. That's the that's sure, the whole buddy. Yeah. that's the whole reason we couldn't see this movie last week is because you had relatives in the hospital. Like, <laughs> like, like this is the most like that is the most unrealistic portrayal of a hospital is in horror movies. Yeah. Um, I also think what's also funny, like there's like there's so much funny stuff about this movie. Like there's so many like reference like stuff that's intentionally referenced. Like, Holy. what ultimately comes down to is this attack on like toxic fandom right. and the best film that they and they pick the absolute best film to u- use to take aim on. And it's they're talking about Scream Eight, but of course we all know they're actually talking about Star Wars Eight, as in Last Jedi. Yeah. And oh my God, that that was like funny because I was one of the few people I liked Last Jedi. Right. And you have like this scene where they're like, and the girl is literally like, it, it's like she's like talking about people hate uh, Stab Eight because they say it pissed on their childhood, and the uh, character is a Mary Sue, and you know, and that's all the stuff they talk about like with the the new Star Wars trilogy, mm-hmm. and I loved that. It was so funny. <laughs> Like it was just so funny, it's just because it's like you you know what they're talking about. Like you, even though you don't watch movies like that, mm-hmm. you you know, yeah, you, you know. Well, it's always been, and I like how they've always been able to like. I feel like for the most part, the commentary that they put in these movies has always kind of felt realistic. Yeah. Um, Scream Two, they were in a film studies course when they actually had that conversation, so it makes sense. Mm-hmm. You know, we've been in film studies courses, yep. so we know how it goes. Yes. Um, yeah, I like it, and then like you know, in the first one, you have Jamie Kennedy sitting there, you know, literally talking about like they're literally discussing what was it prom night? Yeah. They're watching yeah. prom night because it was like Jamie Lee Curtis, and then he's watching Halloween, and that's funny too because in that scene, you remember he's literally going, look out behind you, Jamie. He's going to get you, Jamie. And it's funny because as he's saying that, Ghostface is behind <laughs> Ghostface is behind him and his name is Jamie. Jamie Kennedy. You know, the actor. So it was just funny just seeing it just going in cycles. Yeah. Now, I want to say the kills, I thought it was going to be more brutal, but no. I still thought they were pretty brutal. Some of them were rough. Brutal. Some of them were rough. Like, Dewey got like Candyman. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that was, there were some that were rough. Really. There were some that were rough in this film. Like, um, the, so, the uh, I'm trying. The, the oh, sheriff. Wait. We had the sheriff, mm-hmm. Wes, then Dewey. Felt bad. I just felt sad for Dewey. That means just. Wet, Wes's like, kill made me cringe. Yeah, <laughs> that I mean, was it's rough. like, goes like right through his yeah. like karate all the way through to the other well, side. Well, he slid him up and down like a tuna. You know, he slid yeah. him. Shit. Like peeled that man like a banana. <laughs> you know, like, oh God, yeah. There, there's some. Um, gosh, I did have a lot of fun with this movie. Um, this is easily the best one since the original. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I say, I say, I'd give this one a three out of four. Like it does. Um, it's not you know, like I said. It's Scream just isn't one of my all-time favorites. I think there's smarter, wittier films. Many of them discussed by the younger sister in this film. When, <laughs> when she gets okay. the phone, when she gets the phone call, it says like, "What's your favorite scary movie, uh, Tara?" She goes, "I like the Babadook." Oh, isn't that a little uh, uppity? Or what does he say? <laughs> it's like fancy, fancy, fancy. And she went into like and she's a like, full oh, it's group. heightened horror. And he's like, what the hell does that supposed to mean? Because you know, you get that. And I like, I love how there's like all kinds of like they talk about it follows and the witch, which are yeah. all these hereditary, hereditary, all these like art film horror films loved. 
by uh, you know the people who that's their thing, but reviled uh, by mainly a lot of major like mainstream, ma- mainstream watchers, watchers. <laughs> like the kind of people who would have I don't know liked old. Yeah, yeah, really, for real. <laughs> oh yeah. So the theme for this screen movie because each screen movie had a theme. This one is about bringing back the past chaos and trying to kill them all, yeah. like new Halloween movie. Yeah, and an attack on toxic fandoms and. Um, Gosh, uh, just the modern state of horror. Yeah. Like it's very much, it's very much a survey of the modern state mm-hmm. of horror, and it does. And like that. implementing a lot of new horror yeah. tropes yeah. too. Like right. don't mess with the daughter of a yeah. serial killer. Oh yeah, they play um, off that a lot ne- through this. Never think that you can beat the final girl no. of a horror movie because no, it'll never work. I know. Yeah, and to me, oh Nev Campbell after Jamie Lee Curtis, she's easily I think the best final girl out there. Oh yeah. absolutely. Um, so it's like her, Jamie, and. Uh, Keep forgetting hmm. it. The girl who plays Nancy in Nightmare on Elm Street. She's oh. my other favorite. Hmm. I forgot what her name is. Because she's like, she's like one of those, like, much like Jamie Lee and Sidney Prescott. She's like a very active yeah. final girl. We yeah. just don't talk about like 4A afterwards. Yeah. Like up to 1, 2, and 3. They're, they're mm-hmm. fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I give this a 3 out of 4. Like, I, I give it a 3.5 out oh, of really? 4. Oh, really? What, I, what I, do you I, give the original? I, the original, I almost give a 4 out of 4. Oh, I, cool. I, I watched it and I kind of fell in love with uh-huh. it <laughs> it's a classic yeah it's like, it really does age well yeah oh they've aged they have aged well because Absolutely. they're because they're self-aware like 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 this movie if this like this movie is so tonally inconsistent but because it's a scream movie it makes sense it's okay yeah. for it to be that because it's aware that it is like, i will say the only thing i didn't really care for in this movie was uh sam's constant visions of Billy, I feel that like that that off. was a little bit of a stretch for a scream film. Yeah. Uh-huh. It did not ruin the film for yeah. me. Yeah, because it, it, it was like so few mm-hmm. scenes that it really like I could easily forget it. It just thought it didn't really add you know, anything. When I saw that, I had the thought of okay, so she's related to Billy. Mm-hmm. So what happened? He try she tries to like outplay Ghostface mm-hmm. in his own game. That's why I thought that was gonna happen yeah. in the movie, mm-hmm. but. You know, it didn't really happen yeah. to my expectation. I was, like, kind of disappointed. But, like, I give it, like, three out of four. Yeah. Three, three and a half out of four. You give it three and a half. What about the original? What do you give the original? Oh, four. Oh, uh, you give it, yeah, okay. I love that movie. Yeah, you feel about that how I feel about Halloween. <laughs> yeah, Scream is forever, yeah. like, going to be a movie. I'll be like, yeah. oh, yeah. Uh-huh. It's still it, yeah, it was. Um, so, yeah, um, I guess if... We're done with this. Yeah, go see this. If you like Scream, this is this is very much... Um, you're not going to feel like this is a stab in the butt like I felt Halloween Kills was. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, I did really like this movie. So if you want to get your fun on, we can do trailers. I think I can remember yeah. most of the trailers. It was Batman. First one was the Batman. Yeah, the I am Batman. so excited for this. Yes. Death on the Nile. Yep. Then The Lookout. The Lost City. That's oh, yeah. Well, hold on. Yeah, let's, let's talk about one at a time, though. Yeah. Um, yeah, first we got um yeah the Batman. Ba- Batman. The Batman. Yeah. Very excited. I know. Yes. I you know you know one of the things like um oh man I am so, I hope this not only is like I hope this is not only like on the level of like oh, a no funny. of like a Nolan Batman. I hope this is on the level of like I hope this is also gives us the Catwoman we should have gotten with Halle Berry. Mm-hmm. Halle Berry would have been an amazing Catwoman if that movie wasn't a piece of shit. You know? Have you ever seen Catwoman? I have not. I did. It, it yeah. was garbage. It was, you know, it was, it was, bad, yeah. it was originally <laughs> supposed to be a Tim Burton project that was directly tied to Batman Returns and star Michelle Pfeiffer. Mm-hmm. But by the time it got made, Burton was, I think, like, by that point attached to doing, like, I think his god-awful Planet of the Apes remake. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it, he, his vision didn't get made, and they just, they put, they, they, they shot poor Halle Berry down with that one because she they put her in that because she I think she had that time just won an Oscar for Monsters Ball mm-hmm. and so she was like the perfect choice for that and it just the movie bombed it, mm-hmm. it's one of the worst like superhero movies ever yeah. it's aged like dog shit well and this one has a much darker yeah. Riddler yeah. oh yeah it's... this this Zodiac killer Riddler like that's yeah. definitely like that's, that... a, that's a very new interpretation of him that happens yeah. like even in the video games which are already like ten times darker than the movies and the animated series yeah, yeah the, Riddler, the Riddler is really a character I've always felt like back when Nolan was making his movies Riddler would have been a great um he would have been a great cyber terrorist character, mm-hmm. you know, when yeah. they, because you know how they were kind of doing terrorism as like the subject with yeah. Joker and Bane. Oh, if they had, you know, if they had put made like a Riddler movie in like 2013, 2014, um, also, especially during that time when like 
Edward Snowden and the uh, Julian Assange stuff was going down, like this idea of like stuff getting hacked and released and leaked. Yeah. Oh, you know, the paranoia that especially going into like an election year, like you could have made a really compelling, relevant movie. Oh yeah, and one that like actually touched on a whole like touched on the issue from all sides yeah. as well. Yeah. Um yeah, like the moral because those movies have always been about moral uh Balance. Yeah, yeah, moral balance. Moral compass. And yeah. Who's right and who's wrong. Um, and a whole lot of morally gray stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I've seen a couple of the trailers. Like this one, um, they've, they've got a couple trailers out there. I'm so excited for this movie. I, I don't get the hate that people... I don't know if it's just because it's Robbie Patty. I don't know if they just don't like Twilight I, guy I know a lot Batman. of people do that immediately and I think it's very unfair. <laughs> I don't know. Really I don't is. know if it's because they casted Zoe Saldana as Catwoman because, you know, there seems to be a lot of this, you know, there's a lot of this stuff about talking about like Injecting politics and identity politics in the movies, which, like talking about Zoe Saldana, which I'm like, so it's like, oh, they casted a black cat woman. How progressive of them, ooh. And I'm like, and Halle Berry, <laughs> I just mentioned Eartha Kitt. Back in the 1960s, they yeah. had a black cat. They had a black cat woman in 1960s and a an, uh, Hispanic Joker, Cesar Romero. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, y'all are y'all are not. You know, this is it, it, this is what Scream was talking right. about. Yeah. Y'all are the y'all are the problem. <laughs> Why we can't have nice things? Yeah, I, I am so I am so yes. excited for this Batman movie. Yes. I don't care what anybody says. And I was just saying that like Robert Pattinson, like they're saying, oh, he refused to bulk up. So I, I, I don't well, know. And I think, hey, isn't hey, like there's a, a there's a shot in this of him with his shirt off. He's got like the full on. And at the same time, this is supposed to be about a young Batman, not like know. Batman. After he got bolted, I don't know. I this don't... is like this is like long Halloween Bat. Even though that one was buff, but that's also like a younger Batman mm -hmm. when he was just starting out, which is I, I think the role that Robert's supposed to be playing. I don't know. He looked he looked pretty jacked. He looked to me. fine to me compared. To, I mean, I mean, he looked the last, Bruce Wayne enough to me. The last movie yeah. I saw him was like the lighthouse, and he was like bony in that movie because he's playing a lighthouse keeper. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. People are awful. Uh, I I I'm ready for this movie. Um, next, Death on the uh, Nile. Death on the Nile. We already talked about this Death one. The Lost uh, City. Yeah. Meh. Oh, uh, the lost city. That was that Channing Tatum center. I love how, like, as that trailer went on, they kept putting more and more actors who I said to myself, you are too good to be in this kind of a movie. <laughs> oh, man, that looks like, that that Lost City uh, movie, that looks like... Not for me. No. no. Not for me. That, that, that looks like a movie you just watch. Or, like, yeah. It comes on it, screen. It seems like, it feels like a movie um, that... Um, People in my mom's age group. That, I was going to say, yeah. it's a mom movie. It is a mom Which, movie. I will it's say Sandra that's, Bullock. It's that's, Sandra Bullock in an action movie. That's a statement, too, to take with a grain of salt, because even my mom wouldn't watch that movie. <laughs> yeah, because it's a Sandra Bullock movie. Actually, no, she might. I don't know. Yeah, play, it's got Sandra Bullock playing a lead character and Channing Tatum stripping down. That's that's what It is a mom movie. <laughs> uh, definitely for moms. I was yeah. like, what is this movie? Too, too old for me, that's oh, for man. sure. I, that looks awful. But yeah, Death on the Mom, uh, if you want to go back to Death on the Mom. Oh, I'm I say about Death on the Nile, I might go see that considering how we how dry these next few months are. Mm -hmm. I know Cyrano comes out next week. Mm -hmm. I think it's next week. At some point, I do want to see Cyrano, and if none of y'all have any interest in seeing that, mm -hmm. I yeah. will not be offended. <laughs> and anyway, yeah, I'll let y'all look at that on your I, own I time might, and see if that's what y'all want. I might let my wallet rest until like the next okay. big wave comes All right. in. Yeah. Uh, Batman, probably Batman. Um, yeah, Batman in March, yes. So yeah, Death on the Nile and looks then, fine. It, and, yeah. I, don't know, I, I mentioned before, Agatha Christie just sometimes doesn't work in a movie, and when it does, it's only okay. So mm -hmm. what's our last one? Jackass, Jackass Forever. Forever. All right. Well, do you, what, are y'all Jackass fans? Yes. Nope. Y'all are? You are? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I, I, it's just stupid movies. You can just watch I, it like that. Because that's the thing. We boys, like I'm just gonna say, it. boys have simple minds. We see things, and we're like, man, we want to do that. I want to try that, <laughs> and then say, it happens. I will like, say though, is that it's not that I don't like the content. Yeah. Like I guess, like the the content is like you either love it or you hate it. But at the same time, if I want to see that, I just go look up YouTube videos. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. I that's, mean that's that's why it's like I don't want to pay money to see something I can look up on I'm, the internet. I'm pretty indifferent on Jackass. <laughs> like I get the appeal of it. It's not something I can. I don't care to see a guy get sucker punched in the nads by a yeah. UFC fighter, which is what they're doing in this one. It looks like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I liked I liked Bad Grandpa. I, I thought that was it, it made me laugh. It was it wasn't like yeah. I didn't love it as like much as like the first Borat, but I thought it, it made me laugh a few times and I thought it was fine. 
And I watched like the first half of it, and I was like through with it <laughs> by like the first ten minutes. <laughs> and it's just not it's not my thing. Like I'm not gonna rake on it, like rag on anyone yeah. who does that, like that's it. That's I am. There's right obviously now. an appeal, <laughs> but it's not for me. Yeah. It's the, the it's the stupidity that yeah. comes from yeah. it. Wait. Which I like stupid humor, just. Again, if I want stupid humor, I'll go see someone wrecking their face on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, yeah, if that's everything. So, yeah, I guess I might end up seeing Cyrano by myself. I don't know. Um. Other than that, I can't think of any other movie coming out. Not for the next month. So, I guess I'm going to, I'm just, I guess I'm just going to use this time to finally get around doing my licorice pizza review. Watch Cyrano, maybe, if that's... Although there is all those Sundance movies happening. Oh, I can't go yeah. to that. Oh, yeah, I told that's you about right. that. Yeah, you I told did about that. about that. Um, which is a shame, because I do want to see... Uh, well, here's a recommendation for, like, the viewers. Peacemaker, since that's coming out, on is on HBO. I think it has, like, four episodes. Oh, I haven't seen that, so I don't know. So... I haven't watched The Suicide, either, so uh -huh. I'm not as familiar with yeah. Peacemaker. <laughs> yeah, it's the same one who directed uh, Ga uh, Guardian of the yeah. Galaxy. So, like, if you love Guardian of the Galaxy, then... <laughs> so, yeah. You, you should watch yeah. it. I guess so. Yeah, watch... Uh, <laughs> yeah, if you didn't see The Suicide Squad, I loved it. It's definitely way better than the original. Mm -hmm. All right, so I guess if we're out of stuff to talk about, we're just digging up movies that are just whatever's on HBO Max right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, so, yeah, I guess it's, uh, the, it's uncertain. Much like the ending of this movie on whether this one's getting a sequel or not, it's uncertain what I've got next plan, so yep. yeah. this is my, probably my last one for a little bit. All right, so see ya. Goodbye.